Oh, come on, girls. We got the top two ranked teams in the state playing in the same gym. I know they're just children, but still, the crowd needs to be fired up. Number one level at number two, Tongue River, first quarter. Tongue River wearing the white. They would draw the defense out early, and Sarah Nielsen would slip in from behind. She would get a friendly bounce off the rim, and the Lady Eagles score first, up two to nothing. Lovell would take it outside early on. Alicia Geiser's open in the corner, and she's got a bone to bury. The defending state chance would jump out to a 6-2 to two lead. The home team would rebound. Opposing teams would be wise to remember where Nielsen is at all times. 15 points for the junior, and her team is down 7-6. to six. Tongue River only has two seniors on this year's squad. Here's one of them, Tiana Mitchell. She was on the line, so that only counted for two, but she had a big play later. Home team leads 9-7 to seven after the first eight minutes. Second quarter, the Lady Bulldogs were taking it to the doghouse. Chelsea Ellis stops, pops, and hits from about 12 feet, and it drops. The score is knotted up at nine points apiece. This game was a matchup of two undefeated teams coming in, and both would eventually show why. Aaron Robertson puts one up in traffic, but it got her two points. Lovell goes back on top, 11-9 at this point. But then the Lady Eagles would start to spread their wings and leave the nest. Tara Stimson would get her first two points from the foul line. Hey, it's better than one. The score is tied again at 11-all. Both teams are working for the rebounds, but when it's an offensive board, someone might be wide open. And in this case, it was Mitchell, and she'd make the defense pay the price. Her team is back in command, up 16-14. The long ball was getting it done for last year's third place team, although sometimes it wasn't long enough for three, so they'd have to settle for two at times. Stimson would demonstrate on this highlight, but the home team still leads 18-14. Now don't blink because this was some good heads up defense. Sarah Rawlings saw that pass attempt coming. She's got a free pass to the hoop and one. The extra point was no good, but Tongue River had the momentum up 20 to 14. They would stay after it for a little while longer, Ashley Bolin puts up one of those what the heck type shots. That would finish off a 13 to four spurt for TR, who now leads 22 to 15. Lovell needed to get some of the mojo back before halftime and they would. Ellis was hiding behind the crowd, but we saw her go fetch three points. That was a much needed basket as the visitors only trailed 22 to 18 going into the locker room. Third quarter, the Lady Bulldogs were sniffing out some points and they were finding them. Amanda Shumway has the scent and she's got it. 12 points for the junior and her team is down one, 22 to 21. They were getting loose from their chain thanks to a little defense and transition. Shumway will pick off that pass and take it back the other way. Bump, bucket, whistle, she earned a treat. The three point play has the visitors back up 24-22. More turnovers coming up. Shumway gets another swipe but this time she'll feed it ahead to Leanne Winterholler who will put that puppy to bed. And that would cap off an 11 zip run by the Lady Bulldogs, who now lead 26-22. Tongue River was in a bit of a drought. Five minutes plus without scoring. Nielsen will take care of that problem herself and get one more for her efforts. That got the score much closer with the home team trailing 26-25. At times, they were scrapping for points, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Nielsen gets the job done again as TR would go back up 29-26 heading into the final eight minutes. Fourth quarter, back on the Lady Bulldogs. Geyser picks a pocket and she's off to the races on the far side. She'd win, of course, and we're back to a one-point contest. Visitors down 29-28. The senior was starting to heat up and her team figured that they better give her the ball. That's a happy Bulldog in the window wagging her tail. The three bomb puts her team back up 31-29. Let's get someone else in here. How about Jody Walker? She'll get in on the act with the turnaround. Lovell was in pretty good shape with a 35-30 lead. A skip and ahead, about 25 seconds to go. Tongue River has made zero field goals this quarter, and they needed whatever they could get and soon. Bad shot, but the ball found its way to Stimson, who took care of the slump. But her team is still down 35-33 with not much time left. Here we go. Five seconds left on the clock. Lovell missed the front end of a one and one. TR needs something, anything, Mitchell. She got that shot off just in time. It was do or die and she had no choice, but she made the right one. Put four more minutes on the clock. This game's going into overtime. In the extra period, the Lady Eagles would make their move early. Nielsen, 
board, put back, and the defense had a hard time stopping her. Home team was up 38 to 35. Lovell tried to double her up, but that meant someone was unguarded. That someone in this case was Erin Aximet, a freshman coming off of the bench. She did what she was supposed to do. Tongue River up 40 to 37. But the Lady Bulldogs would bite back quickly. The three ball is short. We weren't able to tell who got the board and put back, but it ended up being Shumway. That was big. Her team is still growling down 40 to 39. Later, seven seconds to go. The Lady Eagles with a one and one. First shot is no good. Loose ball. Walker gets fouled from behind. So now we're headed the other way for a few free throws. This is how the visitors stayed in this game during the extra time. Walker cans both. TR was hoping for another miracle, but a backcourt turnover did them in. It was a well-played game on both sides, but Lovell would get out of Dayton with a 41-40 win.